super. <laughs> a frog, which is a pen stand too, but there are a lot of frogs out there. This one is a clever mechanism. It's just a ballpoint pen. But look at the mechanism inside. It's got a magnet in the base down here. And there's a magnet in the back of the frog's body. So when it swings through the bottom of the swing, just about there, the magnet's operating on the back of the body and making the mouth gape like that. So when you do a big swing, it doesn't seem to like it very much. It won't actually operate very much. But as it's slowing down to the last little bit, the, the mouth has a very nice gape, 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 gape as it does it. A lot of frogs out there. I reckon I've got about 60 of these. And here are some, some of the other ones too. Quite a lot of them, of course, make noises as they should, like a frog. Some of them are electronic here, which is this one here, for instance. Very soft, this one. It's supposed to be a leaf. It's a key fob. When you push the back of the pink frog, it's a tropical one, of course. It's a very soft noise. And the eyes light up electronically. And there's a place for the battery compartment inside. Quite sweet. Whereas this one here is an also a sound one, and it's also got red, but it's also a ballpoint pen. So when I twist it like this, the ballpoint pen comes out. To make the frog operate, you just push this little lever on the back. That's a good crow, isn't it? I like the idea of that being a, a red mouse, and this one, which is another key fob, has got a blue mouse. And they both talk to each other. <laughs> At cross purposes, of course. <laughs> so lots and lots of noises amongst frogs. Some of them are just um, ones you squeeze. This one's had better days, but it's been played with so many kids, so the uh, tiny little tongue just about works, but only just with my finger over it to stop the air escaping. When you squeeze it, a tiny little balloon unfurls like a, like a frog's tongue. Blub, 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 blub. But um, there was never any noise associated with this one. It was a sealed one. I need to get myself another tongue sometime, but it's a nice, nice to see simple designs. Then there's a lovely contrast, a little and large here. Look at this one here. A very small one and a very big frog. This one is a superb, it's a many of metal, a superb clicker, the old frog click, which I had as a kid. And here's the operator, you just squeeze that and it makes a very loud click. And the mouse gapes too, that's a nice feature. Superb version of a frog click. Very nicely done. By contrast, this monster here, you're supposed to put this in the garden. It's got batteries in the base somewhere at the bottom here. Turn it on. What a noise. This is a motion sensor. In the mouth there is a little thing which detects people walking down the garden path to your house. So when they walk past, it detects it and quicks cheerfully to them to welcome them. Or perhaps it's to put off intruders, I don't know. But the idea is, I think from quite some way away, when you wave your hand or move past it, it can turn on its three croaks. Big one though. It doesn't do any other movement, but my goodness, it makes a good noise too. So that's meant for the garden. There's a frog here which I had as a child. Uh, this is very nostalgic for me because um, we played with this idea that my parents made when they were entertaining. They made our own little folk version of it. It was a frog doing this action like this across the carpet. This actually, when I looked at it carefully, is a turtle, but I'm calling it an honorary frog because it'll work with the frog as well. The frogs they made were huge, about this size with cardboard. You put a piece of string through it and attach it to a chair leg on the far side of the room, and by pull release, pull release, pull release, it just about manages to work its way across the room. When you reach near the far side, you do an extra little flip like that, and then you start making it go back the other way. This is something you can very easily make at home yourself, just making a large piece of cardboard, the bigger the better really, nice thick heavy cardboard, piece of string going through it, I think just above the centre of gravity, and then attach it to a chair leg and you'll get this to operate. We had to run races and try to get the frog to the very end, twist it over and then make it come back again and see who the winner was. And they got a banana or an apple as a prize. So for me, a tremendous journey into the past for me. The, the frog game we used to play on the carpets at home. Here's some more frogs lining up, watching my play. This one here, for instance, is quite a well-known, I think the Indians make these. You have to open it up and see what's inside. Oh, one of those, yes, shake it about. It's got little cantilevered legs of a little baby frog inside the mother bats. But sweet idea, isn't it? Very nicely done. When the mouse closes, you wouldn't know there's anything in there. There's an almost perfect seam there, which is very hard to detect. But a nice action, that. I love that. 
plenty of wind-ups out there. This is a very unusual one because there's lots of plastic, plastic feet and there's plastic in the motor. But the body itself is covered in plush, which is very nice to make it soft and for children to, to stroke. Wind it up and you'll do a little hopping action. <laughs> Curious enough, when he goes a certain speed, he starts going backwards again. Look, he's starting to go backwards now. Very strange. So at a certain speed you'll go forward and then you'll go back again. That's nice. Not intended that, I think, by the designer, but I discovered it when I was playing with it, of course. And this one here made by Playvisions is quite a grim looking one, almost like a dragon, but it must be a frog, I think. What's, what's this at the bottom? Oh, well, it's holes for the sounds. It's got a... <laughs> yes, yeah, a, grain, a groan tube, isn't it? That's what they call. By shaking up and down or shaking to one side, it makes a good noise. Good sound, I like it. There's burger bars that have, I think they're probably the biggest toy distributors in the world. And this is an example of what they make. Very nice stuff indeed. But the friends of mine find lots of these. It's a wind up one. It's something for children to take, take home when their parents have bought a nice burger lunch and then put it in their pocket and then they can go home. This is an extraordinary one because it's a white frog for a start, not a, not a green one. He's wearing headphones, and what's this? There's kind of straw coming out of the top of the head. It's most bizarre, but... And a sort of funny, flexible body with a bit of string, string to it, too. But it's a simple little mechanism for, for winding it up, which small children would appreciate, because with their fingers, they're not so dexterous. But quite sweet and very, very strange, indeed. Things people make. Here's a lovely optical illusion, but it's also attached to one of those ones which has got magnets either side. If you put that there and slip it in there, it holds it. But look at this card. It's a famous optical illusion which appears in many, many books on optical illusions. And on the title page they say, what two animals have we got here? Two? Two? I can see a frog, nothing else. Upside down, frog. Backwards, no, frog. Well, the answer is you turn it sideways like that. And there's a horse appears. Very interesting. How the nostrils are part of the frog's body, of the frog's eyes rather. It's, a, it's an extraordinary idea that, very, very cleverly done and very surprising. All you need to do is either turn your head sideways and look at it with your head sort of tipped to one side or else turn the picture sideways and it changes from one to the other. And I like these little things for putting office stationery or, I don't know, menu cards in, at, at dinner parties as a little, little adjunct. Here's something that the Nave Company in Switzerland produced at the, New York, at the Nuremberg Toy Fair about, ooh, that's 20 years ago. Extraordinary. Tommy Ungura, I think the artist was. And it's all made of bits, pieces of wood that come, to, come in bits. Look, look at it. Extraordinary. There's the outside there, and there's a, another piece there. And there's that bit there, but the eyes come out as well. They're just rods like these. Extraordinary with the eyeballs on the front. And the last bit comes out like that. Very plain on the back, but on the front it's got these nice marks on it to make it easier to see what you're doing. Make sure you put these in the, in the, right, in the right eye sockets and the rest goes together. So a lovely idea, very, very interesting construction and almost, almost too good to give to kids because you think it's, it's, it's really a, a, a fine bit of, of, of wood sculpturing, of, of, of art. It's a beautiful idea. That. There's a lovely one here, which is a bit of a mess, but look, look, look what the idea is. This is beautiful. I had to keep it on that because it's so sticky. This is one of these sticky bits of yuck. Well, it's a stretch stuff, isn't it? But it keeps its stickiness very easily. The idea is to reproduce what certain species of frogs do. They lurk on the, on the ponds. And when an insect is flying overhead, they whip up with their tongue and grab things. I'll keep that, actually, because I'll use that as well. Flip like that, and it picks it up. That's an insect, which I've caught. Flip it down there, no. Oh, there we are, caught another one. There's another fly, another one there, yep, oh, caught that one as well. So that's the idea, is reproducing what nature's invented all those millions of years ago of frogs that could, with their sticky tongues, grab insects flying overhead in the air. And this is what this is doing. And the base of the thing has got a little frog design in it, which is very nice. So it's a, it's a bit unsightly to look at, but actually the action is superb and it's realistic because it's what happens in real nature. And I like that idea. There's an extraordinary book here which came out a few years ago. Typical children's book, it's, it's bizarre because there's a hinge here, hinge here, hinge, four hinges. And the idea is to create a frog, a hippopotamus, a tiger and a bird and what else. And that's why they call it hippo frog, etc. I spent a bit of time assembling this because it takes some time to work out which pieces go where. But inside are 
a series of overlays. These are all made of, of acetate. And that's just a, qu a quadrant, you see? So that goes that way, and then this one comes out this way, and then this one comes out this way, and there's more bits and pieces to undo. Somewhere in the bo bottom of this, you should find a frog. Oh, look, he's coming into view here. He's coming into view. That's got to go out of the way. You don't want that bit there. What about this bit? Yeah, that's got to come over here. Oh, that's got to come over here. There he is at last. The frog, which consists of four pieces. One piece goes there, one piece goes there, one piece goes there and there's more to come afterwards. So what an idea for a book. For children, they can model up the animals and have all sorts of wonderful games with it and invent all sorts of names for the animals they created, such as hippo, hippo frog. So for kids, that's, that's a delight. It's a lot of entertainment for them. And the last item is a wonderful card which we have been selling for some time on our websites, Bar and Press. The chap who designs these are, has a lovely stand at Nuremberg Toy Fair and I, go and have a long chat with every time. This is one of these slattered cards. When you pull it down, it changes the picture. And this is a famous fairy tale, isn't it, from Grimm's, of a princess kissing a frog, hoping to find a prince. This is the other way around, of course. It's the frog who's doing the pursuit, and he's after the princess. So when he kisses her, she comes to join him. And there's a the result, lots of little froglets, lots of little tadpoles. What a lovely concept it is. Turn a well-known fairy tale upside down and make it go the other way. I love it.